is this a good film? And it's it's a damn good film. It's a great film. Um, yeah. Woo! So, um, but now I you know I attend all the screenings that are that that are taking place now leading up until the re release of the film. Um, we've gone to a few NFL teams, to some collegiate football teams, and then the film festivals that we've had the opportunity to be a part of. You know, I, I often sit in the audience because I now I don't really watch the film. I, I watch you all watch the film uh, just to gather the response and, um, you know, where the movie takes you, uh, where it takes your energy. So. Anything ever really surprise you as you watch the audience and watch their response? Um, I just, I think that uh, certain scenes uh, different people can relate to. You have mothers and fathers in the audience right now who can, can't even imagine what it would be like to experience what my mom went through. There's athletes that seen the film who either have a friend or themselves that have you know encountered or experienced something of this situation. And then you have actual survivors, men and women who have experienced sexual assault that will have an opportunity to see this film and to see the dynamic of two people who have experienced both in the spectrum, someone who's actually experienced it and someone who's been falsely accused of doing such crime. Um, I think that this, this film is such a, a tool, a vessel for people to, to learn from uh, and, and also I'm hoping to, to share it to other people. Yeah, it struck me as an incredibly brave film in the environment of sort of Me Too and, and this whole conversation, but a lens to look at the criminal justice system. Can you just take me through plea bargains? Like, what is going on there? Yeah. Um, uh, plea bargains, wow. That's something that, uh, that I, as well as the California Innocence Project and other uh, innocent projects around the country are currently fighting uh, against. Uh, 95 to 97 percent of all plea bargains in, in the state of California in the United States ends in some form of a plea bargain. Only, I don't understand that. Only three to five percent of criminal cases will actually go to trial. So when you're at home and you're watching Law and Order and dun dun, that's you know, and they're sitting in a courtroom. That's only three to five percent of criminal cases. That means everyone else is taking a plea, uh, some type of a form of a plea bargain. Why? You're either being forced into a plea, you're being exhausted into a plea, or you're being feared into a plea. I experienced all three. At the age of 16, I was tried as an adult. I went from facing juvenile hall time for 41 years to life. I was told that this life sentence was, was definitely gonna happen. That, you know, I was being told that there was nothing that we could do, that the best thing that was in my, uh, my favor was to take a deal. And literally I sat, you know, it doesn't really depict that, but I sat and fought this case for an entire year behind bars. I missed my whole year, and my whole season, uh, senior year in high school, that football season, uh, walking and graduating with my class, all these scholarship opportunities. So I think you start to go through things, you start to lose things, you start to miss things and people and what you knew to be true. And you get to a point to where you're facing so much time and then they finally get in your face and say, hey, we'll give you probation. And you say, well, shit, I'll take it because I'm done. I've been doing this for a year and, and I haven't even done anything wrong. So you take the deal and deal turned out to be something totally different. Do you stay in touch with that lawyer? No. Um, that's an, it's an interesting question. That lawyer, uh, we didn't know at the time, but she was on her way to becoming a judge. And she didn't want to lose any more cases. So she pretty much began pawning off her cases, taking deals to favor the judge and DA so she can get these, uh, these recommendations towards being appointed. She is now a judge in Los Angeles. Uh, but no, uh, it, it, our relationship ended very oddly where uh, I received the six-year sentence. Uh, I started to serve that sentence. She sent me a letter saying, we're gonna, we're gonna send an appeal to remodify your sentencing. But in order for me to do that, you need an appellate attorney to take over your case. So if you sign this, this relieves me and then I'll bring in this other attorney. I signed the paperwork and she disappeared. I never heard from 